as today we are here at the uh, Committee of Regions, I want to talk about uh, multi-level governance. This is very important. So could you please uh, go to the next slide? Okay? Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you the background and I'm going to talk about the Spanish case. So let's go to the, to the next. So first, uh, we have to see what the Paris Agreement says in its preamble. I mean, of course, preambles are not legally binding, but the Paris Agreement already recognized uh, the importance of the engagements of all level of government. So we need to take into consideration that States, they go to international negotiations, but they go home because multilateral environmental agreements, international law has to be implemented to make it a reality at the national level. Without level action, uh, sorry, without national action, the international commitments, it's just, as I said, law is paper till things are being done, okay? And therefore, here we are talking, we are at the EU level, I mean, uh, we are members of the European Union, and under the um, Paris Agreement, and that is one of the novelties of the Paris Agreement, it's that uh, it it's, uh, it's, uh, took a bottom-up a, a approach compared to the Kyoto Protocol and the, uh, and the UNFCCC, where there were comment and control. I mean, these are your... Uh, your um, uh, emissions limitations, you have here Annex uh, B in the, in the Kyoto Protocol with your limitations, with your commitments, your targets to, of em, emissions reduction, but under the Paris Agreement, countries they have, and in this case all members of, or, or all signatories of the Paris Agreement, they have to prepare the indices. That this has been translated at the EU level to, uh, through the uh, regulation on the governance of the, European, of the energy union to what it's called the NECPs, the uh, National Energy and uh, Climate Plans. Okay? So, and we will see how, why it's so important, the action of uh, regions and municipalities because of the uh, Fifth, uh, the five dimensions of the NECP, because the five dimensions of the NECP, which are uh, uh, decarbonization, which uh, it's about mitigation and uh, energy, I mean renewables, uh, it's about energy efficiency, it's about energy security, it's about the uh, uh, internal electricity or energy market at the EU level, and also innovation and research. So in many countries, these of, of the EU, and in many others in other parts of the world, uh, the powers to make action, to, to develop policies and laws, lies in different levels of government. So let's go to the annex. So I'm going to talk about, of course, uh, which is the uh, um, title of my a presentation, uh, it's uh, the case of Spain. What are first? We need to check first what are the climate commitments of Spain because this is first uh, dimension of the NECPs and of course uh, this is part of the commitments also as Spain because Spain is also a contracting party of, uh, of uh, uh, the UNFCCC, the Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement. So we have the EU uh, uh, level, we have uh, mm, targets in the field of uh, climate mitigation, in the field of uh, renewable energy, and in the field of energy efficiency. That, by the way, I want to recall that last year, under the exercise of the first global stock taking, what it has been called the uh, Dubai Consensus, there was an agreement that uh, to help the transition in a way from fossil fuels by 2030, uh, the presence of, I mean, of renewable energy has to triple and energy efficiency has to double worldwide. So that's why the EU under the, the Repower EU increase uh, all these targets. So here you can see that Spain has targets that has been uh, introduced in the Spanish climate change law, which is LCCTE, in the climate change and energy transition law, but we also have those under the NECP. If you know and if you see uh, 
every country has different targets because at the EU level we are acting since the Kyoto Protocol in this bubble system in which uh, and under the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities that has been already commented by Jake uh, Worksman, uh, also this works at the, internally at the EU level. So we have different uh, commitments and Spain has uh, a stronger commitments in uh, uh, renewable energy than even the, the EU, but it is not the case for mitigation, but uh, we have increased with their review of the uh, NECP. That I must say that in Spain, our uh, targets, they are legally binding. The, the um, uh, lawyer that talked uh, from uh, Estonia, uh, she was explaining as the case in which uh, she was mentioning that uh, uh, NECP targets are not legally binding, but in Spain, first, we have all these targets uh, in the Spanish climate change uh, and energy transition law, but now uh, they, ha they have been increased. The law has not been amended by the NECP, has been adopted, the, the update or review uh, has been updated by a royal decree, which is a regulation, what means that the targets are legally binding, and there could be a case before, uh, I mean, because <laughs> before a court of law. Could you, I, I don't want to read all the targets because you can read perfectly the, the, the presentation, so can we, and I don't have the time. So having said that, we have to go to the, the case of my country. Uh, my country, uh, under the uh, 1978 Constitution, it established uh, and uh, or it uh, divided the territory in municipalities, provinces, and autonomous communities. And the Constitution recognizes the autonomy and of regions uh, to manage their own affairs. And the Spanish Constitution has also uh, distributed competencies uh, regarding, uh, amongst the autonomous communities that, uh, and the state, the national level. When we talk about uh, autonomous communities, it's a kind of, I mean, we are a quasi-federal state, and autonomous communities is, a, is quite similar to for Germany landers, and they have a lot of, I mean, they have a strong level of, of powers. And for municipalities, we have a different law. But when we talk about fighting climate change, there are many matters that are related to uh, fighting climate change. These are energy issues, uh, environmental protection, or for example, okay, uh, Shaba is leaving me alone, so I don't know where it's there. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, for example, in energy also we have to talk about land planning and we have to talk about agriculture. When we, we, we want to reduce and mitigate emissions, but also when we want to deploy renewables. Like, for example, in the case of uh, energy, it's quite complex, the system. Like, I, I will provide you an example. Uh, the state is competent to grant authorizations for those projects that are, uh, whose uh, power is higher than 50 megawatts, whereas will be the autonomous communities, the ones that provide authorizations for projects that are below 40 megawatts. But in addition, if we talk about deployment of renewable energies in areas that are already uh, artificial or where there has been human intervention, the best places are buildings. And for buildings are municipalities, those that have the power to grant authorization. So this is just an example. For environmental protection, the national state has the competence to produce uh, environmental protection rules or legislation, but autonomous communities, they can develop those uh, uh, national laws. They can do it even stronger. And in addition, they have the power for executing the law. So they are the, the, the ones that are granting permits. Okay, I have to run now. So for example here, it's complex because uh, uh, for uh, now with the Renewable Energies Review, uh, the Renewable Energy Directive 3, states they have to design, I mean, to identify uh, uh, acceleration areas. But acceleration areas, in some cases, I mean, you have to take into consideration biodiversity protection. 
and our autonomous communities, the one that have most the competencies for biodiversity protection. Land planning, the state has no, the national state has no almost powers, are the municipalities and the autonomous communities. So can I go, okay, these are, the, let's go because I don't have the time. These are some examples of how, so uh, Spain has its own climate change and energy transition law, but several autonomous communities, they have already developed their own climate laws. And uh, the first one was Catalonia, uh, even before the Spanish state, but here you have a, a list, I don't have the time, so let's go, but not only climate laws, but the Spanish climate change and energy transition law also ask, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can, the, the, the autonomous communities to notify then at the national level through a climate change uh, policy coordination commission, their own energy and climate plans. So autonomous communities, they have also developed strategies and a kind of NCP. So here, can you, we go to the next one? Yeah. So, uh, okay, uh, there are, I don't have the time, but there are even some autonomous communities that they have a stronger targets for uh, climate mitigation, for uh, a deployment of renewables, even stronger than those of, and not for energy efficiency, they stayed at the same level as the Spanish government or the national uh, level, but some they are even uh, stricter than in those targets for uh, renewables and for uh, mitigation than the Spanish uh, state level in their plans or uh, strategies, okay? So uh, my conclusions, uh, because I don't have the time to go further, uh, the roles of regions and of municipalities cannot be underestimated. They play a very important role to fight climate change at the time of implementing, and therefore, therefore these laws can be also enforced. And of course, without their action, uh, uh, the Paris Agreement uh, objectives won't be attained. Of course, we need also companies, as we have seen in the previous presentation, and I just want to bring a, a sentence that was very much used during a Rio, first Rio conference. I was then on a student in London. It was 1992 uh, Rio conference on the United Nations conference on um, uh, sustainable uh, development. And it was think globally and act locally. So I would say think and commit globally and act locally. So thank you, and I'm sorry I cannot provide you more details in my presentation. And I forgot to mention, we are, have been working on this since uh, at IDMA, uh, analyzing all the, the, the region's uh, policies and plans. Uh, we have 17 autonomous communities uh, in the last four years. We are doing a follow-up uh, constantly on, on this, and now we are reviewing all the commitments of the autonomous communities. So thank you very much for your time um, for listening to me. Thank you.